Hello, and welcome to the second roll history, where we take uh, the last couple episodes, make a recap, and then just talk about anything else. So, this will be over sessions two through five. I probably will miss some stuff, but um, at least we got some ground to cover, which is starting with the spider fight. Or the second time that I knocked out Corrin. Yeah, really. Yeah, um, I'm gonna be a hundred percent. I don't BS my rolls, <laughs> so. Sure, I, you don't, Azen. I really sure don't. don't. <laughs> I really don't. I can get it. <laughs> now I have to get a dice camera <laughs> just so people believe me. But I'm the DM. You're not meant to believe me. Um, but, so, I really liked the cathedral. I liked how you guys got in, because that was not the way you were supposed to get in. <laughs> but, no, that's about this campaign quite a bit. No Cause, kidding. Yeah, because it did a lot of character building, uh, that area. I liked how Gario started reacting towards Arcris and a few of the others. Um... Arcris definitely flourished a lot more with going to save a little Norik, the treasure hunting in itself, uh, that kind of thing. The realization that a uh, person of the party is a crossdresser. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no crossdresser in the party. There is just a really big chested male carrying around an. Mm hmm. Which, uh, speaking of that axe, I did make a small mistake. I didn't realize Wrathful Smite was an only melee thing, so yes, she could have thrown the axe, and no, she shouldn't have gotten the spell off on it. Oops! I mean, technically, it's still melee, because she threw a melee weapon, right? Mm. Most people will call that ranged. Same with throwing hand axes, javelins, darts. Yes, but those are actually labeled as ranged weapons. Hand axes aren't. We'll just chalk it up to DM and everybody else learning this time. If you want to continue with it, that's up to you. That's a well, DM I am logic. Um, yes, logic. Uh. For those of you who never played D&D &D before, that is the concept that everybody, at least in our group, knows as rule zero. We can say basically what the DM says goes, and if the DM decides it goes, no one can really argue much more after that, although Brad definitely tries. That's definitely the truth. Um, so, the tunnel really was the only way you were going to get the decanter. There wasn't really much of anything else. I didn't really have anything planned if nobody played a small character or a character that could shrink other than just like, well, you're going to have to spend time reshaping the tunnel. Have fun with that. I mean, if somebody, was down, if somebody was down there and saw the door, all they would have to do is go press the tissue and just start throwing blocks out of it. Oh, that'd be Mold Earth. Presentation doesn't move any. The only reason it worked on the sand was because it was cleaning the sand, just moving it out of the way. And, you know, such light particles, I'm like, okay, fine. Something that can be done with one hand can be done with presentation. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and strike that comment just for the questions Brad's going to have about it later. Well, no, because I'm even looking at it. Because I was, was, I was like, wait, why can't we do that? And then it literally says, clean or soil an object no longer, no bigger than one cubic foot. Right. So I figured cleaning a cubic foot of sand, you could argue that one. Because it's not an overly strenuous thing. Unlike making 15 million gold. For those of you who don't know, there was a weird... Uh, chat on the side in Discord talking about, you know, hey, you really wanted to be quick about making some money. Here's how you do it. And here's the uh, most, I would say, complicated way of getting a, what did you call it? A peasant railgun? Oh, yeah, the peasant railgun. Which still apparently works in five. No. 
Oh, come on. No, because we know Bla Brad You're... with his other character would exploit it to hell and back. And then, yes, I can agree to no. I swear, I'm, I'm going to make the big bad stack all of the demons in hell in a line. I'm going to have this super great area, er, arrow. Hey, Foxy. And uh, with this arrow, he's going to pass the arrow through all the demons and just create... Uh, oh, what is that orbital strike system? That's, it, it's not explosive ordnance. It's literally just metal rods that's hanging in like, satellite stations. Couldn't tell you. Ryan knows what I'm talking about. It'd be like that. I want to say it's a railgun, but that's not right. It is not true. It does not use anything other than gravity. Not much. We were just making fun of uh, Corrin being attacked for and downed by spiders in session two, and talking a little bit about the cathedral itself. Kinetic bombardment. Yes, that's what it'd be like. Okay. I'll be completely honest with you. I did not expect to either one defeat swarm of spiders and two gain a level from it at all. Truly, they're just spiders. Yeah. Right, I say put... that again. I keep thinking it's like it's not. This isn't exactly an XP variety game. It seems like it's more milestone. I guess. Yeah, I do milestone more than anything. Ah, uh, I was gonna say Aldera should teach you that. Yeah, I guess so. I like. I like moving up levels when the story asks for it. Also because I think XP limits the kind of things I can throw at you guys. Because once you reach an XP milestone, unless I take the cool things from, you know, the last level, the last two levels or whatever, and throw ten more at you, it's like, eh. I mean, either that or what I, what I used to do is I would literally just go to the monster and be like, what's this hit die? Oh, a D12? Okay, D12. Okay, I'm adding extra 8 HP. I mean, that does help uh, at times, but I don't want everything to seem like an HP sink. And uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, entangling rugs, cloakers, uh, other things like that, like mimics and stuff like that. Those all are cool, but at higher levels, you just kind of look at them and you're like, oh, look at you. <laughs> Aw, ain't he cute? But it's wrong! Hazen, can I suggest something we play on Brad sometime? This is not to be mean, everybody. This is, you know, I've, uh, I've played with I mean, Brad longer uh, than I've played with any of the others. I yeah. let, me, let me stop what you're about to say in the first place, because you realize this is going to get uploaded. So if you want to actually play a trick on it, you should probably shush until we're... I don't know if he even wa bothers watching these, though. I'm saying he may watch them too late at that point. But excellent point. I'll hold it for a little bit later. Actually, I will. T I will message you at haste, and I just want to see how far you laughed at the idea, though. Oh no! And also, yes, Foxy. Corin dies very fast. He dies fast. He dies a lot. Um, I. That seems to be most of his characters. I can't explain that. I can't. Just as I can't explain that. Uh, Nora Cagario went down one right after the other in the latest session. I mean, I have an 18 I DC, why. and I get that, but I also literally charge into a dude who I was pretty sure was a level above me at level 2 as it was, and he was already carrying a scimitar, and I thought it would be a good idea to disarm him because normally bandits aren't smart enough to carry more than one weapon. Lap of judge. No, yep. I you think Norik. You could have asked what he looks like, and I would have said, told you he has a scimitar out and two daggers on him. Because Gario's just going to sit there and go, hmm. Jen, like, that, that doing... idea is evil. I might yes, use it. Yes, it is. I might I use it. I can't take credit for that one, though. I can't take credit for that one. The minute I started, I read that one one time, it was, oh, God. And then I thought about it. I was like, ooh. How, how yeah. strong was the guy from the last session? He was uh, decently strong. He was meant to be a challenge. Like I said, I believe I said it at the end of the session, but I'll rehash it here. The party was not supposed to win. The party was supposed to all be knocked out and be transported to a bandit camp. Was that in video that that was the end? I you said that? It was supposed to be. I might have accidentally cut it off and said it. Uh, I thought I had said it in video because I wanted Angie to be there and present 
for something that would be on the show. Uh, and yeah, they it was supposed to be an escape the camp thing next episode where uh, Gario was going to get a moment to shine with Arcris, where Arcris' weapon can't be taken and Gario's literally has to be hacked off of him. I would have to be disarmed. Uh -huh. Yep. Uh... Oh, well, damn, Mr. Bricks. Yeah. The other two, the little bandits with the crossbows were meant to die. I, I didn't have much faith in them staying up. Uh... But yeah, the bandit captain was going to like storm around and like hunt you guys down, but everybody just kind of ran up to him, so he was just like, "Okay, I'll stand in this one spot." It also probably helped that I literally got to him in one term and went, "Hi, I'm going to play with you." Yeah, and all three of them just kind of looked at you and went, "Okay." <laughs> well, it never be said that Gario is a coward. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if how I'm playing Norik is just detrimental, though, to a point. <laughs> but then again, I feel like even as a healer, he'd still want to try to prevent injury. So, I mean, it's... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when your god is the god of death, it's not... Well, you know, god of dying more than to be more specific, but... It's not unheard of to kind of speed up the process for him. That's true, too. I even told Philippe before we left, it's like, yeah, death isn't really something I worry about. So. Yeah. No, that's why I wanted to play like an Oath of the Crown Paladin or something like that. It's like, uh, to for that way you could, you know, say a line like, to forgive you is up to the Emperor. I'm the one sending you to him. Thanks, that's, uh, that's almost what I had Ryza turn into, almost. Yeah. Um, speaking of, we are allowed to talk about that, and I am allowed to announce that, uh, Angie might start running her own campaign, we're thinking on Sunday, uh, nights, uh, in that campaign, I am a player, I am actually excited, I play a human conjuration wizard named Yo, uh, his full name is Amidamaru, because it's a reference to, uh, Shaman King, but he goes by the nickname Yo, because calling him a meat, well, it's, no, it's not Amidamaru, it's Amidamaru. If I remember the pronunciation correct. Oh, I think it's Amidamaru. Uh, I had to look it up and it took me forever. Um, shoot, I can't remember. But yeah. It's either Amidamaru or Amidamaru, something like that. I... No, I remember you said it was Amidamaru and we both know why. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he is a scribe to Jen's character, Ryza. Who is a homebrew class of paladin, which I think is called the Oath of the Dragon Guard? Or... Right. Oh, wow. I didn't think I'd actually get that. Yep, so Oath of the Dragon Guard. Uh, very, very good. Yep, she is a gold dragonborn, um, and she is currently being put in an arranged marriage. I, I completely, you know... Uh, shock as hell because her normal job is she's an ambassador to this empire. I mean, you gotta put forth strong leaders, and I mean, putting two dragonborn in charge of a place ruled by a dragon. Malric's not dragonborn, he's half dragon, remember? <laughs> eh, potato, potato. He can fly, rise like he can't. That's something that still, like, eggs her horribly. <laughs> no, I don't think after I get to get wings. Oh, no, they can get vestigial wings that are... That's why you just play a uh, dragonborn dragon sorcerer. You get the wings That's... anyway. I was going to say, I'm hoping at some point if Angie will allow it, maybe she can eventually get the ability to fly. I think that'd be amazing. Well, there are magic items that allow single flight, whether it be a broom, there's a cloak of flying, you could get a uh, cloak of the bat, which I think lets you fly at night. What are you talking about, Leo? Sounds like a friend's dragonborn with arranged marriage. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Foxy has uh, friends playing D&D. &D. That might be a similar situation going on. 
I think it'd be interesting if we get Ryan in on the game next day since he's not, but I mean, that's totally up to Angie. We're already at what level? Four. Was it four? God, it feels like we're further along than that, although I might nope. be thinking of Primrose and not Ryza. Yeah, Primrose was like level seven, maybe eight. Eight. Yeah. No, it's just we did a lot of uh, role playing. That's probably why it feels like it's more far along. Yeah, that's definitely true. Mm. Anyway, so back to the current session with you as the DM. Uh, what was something other than, you know, us defeating the crap out of the bandit and the bandit captain, something you had thought was likely to happen, either RP and or fight-wise? RP and or fight-wise, okay. Um, I have to think of that, because there is quite a few things that I didn't prepare for. Uh... Well, Did you expect Nork or... would be the Volcanda uh -huh. tamer? Did you expect Nork would be the Volcanda tamer? Um, no, that's definitely not. I didn't have an expectation for that. I the only person I knew would have the best chance with it would be Gario because Gario had seen these kind of animals before. But huh. little Norik decided to move forward, and I was like, okay, well, if this works, Norik gets a mount. That'll be fine. And I love it. I really do. It's like, oh my god, he has a buddy. <laughs> I'm glad you like Dante. I'm glad people do like, uh, the Volcandas. I still need stat block for him when you get a chance, please. Yeah, that is true. I need to do that. <gasps> what about you, Ryan? What's something you didn't expect to happen? Or just kind of blew you out of the water? Honestly, so far, I have not been surprised by most things, except for the fact that we keep not following the storyline. What do you mean? Uh, like, the fact that we murdered the dude who was supposed to take us to the abandoned camp. Or the fact that we went down the hole instead of finding the actual entrance to the place. Or pretty much everything that keeps on happening. Well, basically, I'm a very, very reactive DM. I will set a framework... But even that framework can be changed with the right spell, the right action, the right reaction, that kind of thing. I, I did have an access up to the bell tower, but what was going to happen is when you pulled the access, sand was going to pour through and then the bell was going to sink. Just kind of give you an idea of how dilapidated the place was. But since you started from the top, I had to make it that you could access the bell tower from the side if you wanted. But yeah, in the in the general scheme of things, I've not been surprised by most of the things. Like the most thing I was surprised by was the random dude who just came in ranting and raving. Yeah. Yeah, that was a little surprising, especially as like a cliffhanger on that one episode. I really wanted to kill him. <laughs> well, on the you bright too. Well Well, on the bright side, uh he's definitely not the only one. Great. Who would have guessed? Yeah, th those little Kuatoa hybrids are uh, becoming a problem. I was about to say, what is he? He's a I... hybrid of a god-conjuring beast from the netherworld. But basically, from what you guys were able to see, I can't give you all the information yet because that would be fun. Um... It's a human, this case human, but yes, humanoid, that has had a part of their body transplanted with that of a Kuatoa's. In this case, the man had the spinal cord of a Kuatoa. Probably two spinal cords, given the shape difference. I was going to say, as soon as you said something about gills and fins and stuff, I kept thinking, it's like, this sounds like something that was an experiment out of the Is It Guild. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if I was running a bit more Ravnica stuff, uh, that definitely would be the case. You know what would be really nice? To have my druid in this campaign, who's from the Underdark, who <laughs> literally would have sat there and go, nope, that thing needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> Did we ever give him a name again? I can't remember what his name was, Ranji's. Or no, it was your other campaign, Hazel. Yeah, it was Aldera. 
that uh, he brought in the Druid. That was the first time he ever played in any of my campaigns. I really enjoyed that, though. That was really fun, <laughs> having you in for that. I want to keep going sometime, but that's okay. <laughs> Freaking hate Kuatoa. Moving on to a new campaign after, like, not finishing an old one is like tr remembering an ex fondly, but trying to be like, oh, it's okay, I've got this new one going on, and it's great. That's why my yeah. usual thing, honestly, is just to do one-shot campaigns. One shots are nice because that way you can look back at them and be like, "Oh, I wish I could have done something else this way." But we get <laughs> finish the story. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The I did a Minds of Pandelver for like I think it was a session and a half with another group one time, just as a one shot. And oh my god, that was my first introduction to Ryza, and it was right off the bat, level ten. So I had. You know, class I hadn't played before, race I hadn't played before, and all the stuff on top of it that I had to try to figure out. How do you play it at level 10? Yep. All your aura, aura, auras, um, your spells, your smites, and all that kind of stuff. Like, yep. This uh, is interesting. Arcris, I think, like, plans on taking more smite spells as levels go on, so I think Angie's going to turn Arcris into kind of a mini paladin. <laughs> I was about to say, when you said something about Smite, it's like, oh, what? Yeah, because uh, Hexblades get Wrathful Smite, which I believe does a d6 of psychic damage, as well as the weapon damage, and causes fear. Maybe not. But yeah, um, Arcus does a lot of damage, and that's something I'm going to have to watch out for. I'm actually surprised I was able to get off even one uh, instance of necromantic damage with um, Norik, and he says, like, oh, you know, some of his family do it. <laughs> no one's called him out on it yet. <laughs> he just did one. Well, I mean, the person who saw it the most can't call you out on it because they fainted with you. This is true. And we all know Corrin's going to be laser-focused. Let's see, what else? What else happened between spiders and now? Oh, quite a bit. And... Uh, I mean, there was the uh, Jiko party that you guys had. Oh, that's right. I didn't say, I don't know if Ryan was there for that one. Uh, oh. After we got through with the... Um, cathedral? Yeah, cathedral. Yep. Uh, nope. Basically met up with the girls that were chasing the worm again and just had a mini party. That was fun. Oh, Ryan got to see one. Ryan got to see Carissa. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was for that. I can't remember. I couldn't remember if he was there for that one or not. No, he wasn't there for it. He got his own little mini session. Ah, that wasn't oh, put on stream or anything like that. And in that, he got to meet Carissa, and he learned a few things. And one of the things is, uh, according to Carissa, the moon is an eldritch abomination because that's her patron. Uh, Carissa yeah. demanded that uh, as part of her pack she go pack to the chain and that her familiar would be in the shape of her patron her familiar is a little moon that orbits her I thought it was like an iron stone or something wow. I, I said it floats like an iron stone no it's her familiar and uh, so yeah if you talk to Carissa you can uh, hear about how the moon is an eldritch abomination holy crap and, Sorry. And it's just one of those things where you think about it and you can go, oh, but think of the fun. Like, we live in a world where dragons can set fire to entire towns and stuff like that, and the rock floating out in the sky affecting our oceans. Like, that's not magical at all? Okay. No, you actually just hit on a question I was just now thinking. I was like, if we're doing, if she's got a mini moon around her head, so if she walks near the ocean, do the tides, like, come toward her? Nope. But uh, she can't communicate with her patron on new moons. It's her power is kind of like water bending. That's kind of cool. Waxes and wanes with the moon itself. 
I think I'm still really proud somewhat of the point that Norik had cast command on Flint just to make sure we could get Corrin's butt moving past <laughs> that what he was trying to be weak. I'm still really proud of that. I'm sorry, I never talked that one in the chat. It was uh, that we were on the side and Bra was just so much on a roll. I texted Hazen, and let, not, yeah, I texted Hazen, uh, I wouldn't do this <laughs> because, well, I felt things needed to move along. I like seemed like most of the others had at that point too, to a point. What were you gonna do if he didn't decide to move his butt? Were we gonna get like a another cobra set coming after us um this was around the carts correct right um basically i was going to let you guys just kind of fight it out if someone needed to be knocked out for the sake of the party moving someone was going to get knocked out at any point Actually, uh pvp could break out it's just whether or not the players want to kept thinking uh, with the, when that started I kept thinking it's like okay it's fucking either Gary or Arcris and again at the same time ooh, in the same time you know like I said Norik's one of those ones where if he can prevent injury he's gonna do it even if it's slightly distasteful and that to a point that was slightly distasteful but it worked yeah. um what I'm most excited for is you getting uh Norik past level five spells and you're realizing that level five is just your midway because i believe every other class you've had the highest level spells you went to was five yes uh primrose would have gotten high it definitely would have gotten higher but when we cut out for that one couldn't do it and i honestly don't know how high paladin spells go yet five so you only get up to paladin fifth level up to level five yep Paladins and Rangers. I know Rangers only go up to level 5. Mm -hmm. So, here's the fun part. A lore bard at level 10 can do everything great that a paladin, or, or that an epic level or a uh, ranger or paladin could do. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> oh, you, you get steel wind strike? I'm gonna get that at level 10. Oh, you got yeah. holy weapon that replaces, like, your spite, smites and makes everything better for you? I'm just gonna get that now. Yeah, I know. That's the fun of bards. Just like that that's the thing you do. You look at the high level spells of the people who can only go up to level five to see what they're hiding. I honest to God, I did want to try to make Primrose the Lord Bard at first, but I just loved the idea of thinking of, you know, an elephant kind of semi from the dan the pink elephants on parade dancing scene from Dumbo mixed together with the the hippopotamus from Fantasia moment, and it's like, yes, I like this idea. Mm -hmm. Um, nope, my brain just farted. Ah, uh. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, no, for bards, I want to do a glamour bard, which is basically the exact opposite of what Nate's running. Oh, I forgot he's a bard. <laughs> Jesus. Everybody keeps forgetting Jay's a bard. They just imagine he's some form of ambiguous caster. He acts so much more like Varus, just the way he talks and deals with him to a point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Varus is another character of Nate's who's a swashbuckler? Yep. He's an Eldarin swashbuckler who is an investigator for the Fae. And uh, the, th the thing I see between Varus and Jay, Varus is like 100% workaholic. Like if he's not working, he's working. Um, Jay seems to be having a lot more fun, just even if mostly at other people's expense kind of fun, but still. Yeah, I could agree to that, but I don't yeah. know if I've seen enough of Jay's personality to make a call. At least not yet. I do, I do have to say, as a DM, I do enjoy everybody's character so far. Um, I enjoy Gario oh God, I for Gario. his pragmatic like look at things. He, he's always looking at things like, wait a second, 
there's a baseline here. <laughs> like, everybody's trying to figure out how to uh, mess with this dragon. Let's start with the fact that there's a dragon. Uh, I think he's definitely one of those, you know, I call bullshit bullshit style characters. <laughs> he's either going to call, call bullshit or cause it. There is no in between. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Gario, uh, as it has now been revealed in a couple sessions, has a little voice in his head that is uh, urging him on to do things. Despite his better judgment, question mark? Oh, no, it was his judgment that got him it. Yeah. Was it, it was Gario's judgment... And I love, I love, I love him. I really do. I love the thought process behind him. But I'm just kind of sitting here like, oh, it's like the 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 XDM in me is sitting here going, I want it. I want to expose this. This will make the story so good. And the other side of me is like, fuck no, I don't want anybody to know this. That'll be terrible. Yeah. It's like, no, no, not at all. Like, story-wise, it sounds great. But me, as someone who wants to continue playing. Right. <laughs> I'm still really freaking interested about what the hell that mo metal rod is. Or, I guess it's, well, it's a rod, but literally, I guess with Nork's size, it's a quarter staff to <laughs> I don't remember what metal rod. It was given to her him at the start of his journey. Oh. Basically, I took it to the smith. I wanted to ask Philippe about it before we left, but everybody was kind of asking Philippe for everything. So it's like, okay. He had him thought, of, like, okay, he's busy. Maybe somebody else knows something. I was going to say, I, I thought we were talking about that wooden pole that he kind of sat there and just started sawing down to make it your head. It's dope. By the way, that was fantastic. That actually sounds exactly like a saw going through wood. I love that. Thank you. I. As a kid, I thought parrots were the greatest thing, and I tried to parrot a lot of things, uh, which is honestly how I started practicing trying to do like things like an Irish accent or uh, Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. It's the cartoon show, not the Disney movies. I swear to God, everybody, if anybody's ever understood the, the Deke style Inspector Gadget uh, claw voice, it's almost dead on. I was scared the first time he did it. <laughs> Get you, gadget. You see what I mean? It's the only one I can do. It hurts after a while, but it's just one of those things that's fun. And it's a fun thing to bring to D&D &D because that's how someone touches a demonic statue. And it's just, on the seventh night of the hundredth year, the blood moon will rise. Like Matt Mercer, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't even put me that close. <laughs> Icarus melted wings doing that. Oh, uh, I mean, you know. And if it is the so peanut butter up, boy Brad? himself. We have not greeted Gret. Brad yet. Brad, wow. Well, if I actually give a, someone a name for that, I might make that my next character. What? Grad may not be the worst name for somebody. <laughs> yeah. I still, like, one of my favorite character concepts, uh... We are so off topic right now, but it's just kind of fun to go off talk D and D, just talk D and D. Um, one of my favorite character concepts, the one that I would like to run probably for a one shot, was the idea of a goblin uh, sun soul monk, who basically was a monk going out into the desert to do their, uh, you know, their training, their testing, and stuff like that. And they went off the beaten path, got lost, and he basically went mad and started kind of worshiping the sun and somehow through that awoken sun soul abilities and so he's got all these awesome sun soul powers which uh, admittedly aren't overly awesome but i still love them and uh it's one of those things where he's going to be a really cool character especially because he is slightly insane so if he spends too long out of the sun like you know underground in a mountain or you know stuck in a building for too long without sunlight he starts to get antsy and panicky and anxious and all that kind of stuff Brad, when you can empty your mouth to have a question, I've already asked the other two, what is something you didn't expect to happen in the last few sessions, basically from the swarm of spiders that chewed you to nothing up till the current barbarian, or not barbarian, excuse me, bandit group 
that we knocked out and Hazen didn't expect to happen. Something I either don't RP know. or Maybe fight the fact wise. That I got ran. RP or fight wise, you never expect it was going to happen. I don't know. Maybe the fact that I got my ass completely handed to me out of nowhere. <laughs> By the spiders or is it something oh. else? No, the fucker that showed up in the middle of the night. In the middle of yeah. the night. Oh, that's right. The one that left the uh, two pieces of, was it leather armor? Yep. There's significance to those that I hinted at. But more will be revealed as we go forward. For those who may or may not have watched yet, they say there's, there's been a hint that Corin is a former mercenary. Oh, no, and... he straight up is, but the reasoning why he no longer is part of that group has not been revealed. But, but apparently they are trying to kill you. Well, us. I can tell you it's not the group. He thinks. If so, I'm going to be even more pissed than going after somebody. <laughs> they might not be a current member of the group. You can't do anything if they're uh, a member that left. Or was forced to leave. We shall see. I'm still trying oh. to figure out there was... Was it the group that came looking for the crazy dude and the minute they saw Norik's deity symbol, they kind of just washed their hands of it? I don't want to say they got... They didn't seem like they got scared, or am I remembering this wrong? No, what happened is they came in, uh, Norik said something, they saw the dragon mark. And, uh... Oh, that was it. Once realizing you were of House Drasco, your credibility went... That's what it was. I kept thinking, I couldn't remember if it was the dragon mark or his holy symbol. Yeah, it was the dragon mark. Holy symbols, eh. I mean, not that they don't, you know, worship gods or anything like that, but when you're the celestial huntsman, you're just kind of careful of what gods you interact with because you don't want to piss any off. I guess that's a true point. I just want to say I'm very proud of myself that I'm the only one that did not say a single word to those people. I did not lie to them. I was not question nothing. I'll be right. If need be, I'll just say, "Oh, I, I, honestly, I had no idea. I'm just traveling with these fuckers." Well, why is there a god that looks like you? I don't know. Do you see these ruggedly handsome? You've, you've never seen an Asimar before? That would be a deception check of all of deception checks. <laughs> you know? I would like to tweak it one time so that you're playing instead of the stereotypical oh, I'm a human who has an a celestial ancestor. It's actually you're one of the other races. You know, yeah. you're a half orc, half Asmar. A half. I mean, an ugly half bird. No, you're thinking Aarakocra. Asmar yes, of the anti tieflings. Um, They're humans that can randomly sprout wings or something else for like a minute and they get a few extra buffs yep uh what? Terran what is one of them not and... half or a variety uh nope. Terran's just a man help <laughs> just imagine like a Goliath Asimar just this huge glowing man with strangely symmetrical features for Goliath. That man doesn't look like he's been punched in the face as many times as normal. You saying something okay. about Goliath? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, okay, I've got another small bit of trivia. Maybe this would be interesting. Okay. Favorite spell? Oh, Glyph of Warding, hands down. Favorite spell? Mm-hmm. Glyph I, I have Honestly, proven... As Micah, my trickster cleric, what glyph of warding can be implemented for? 
if the DM allows you to go batshit crazy with it. Because technically, I was we shouldn't have been that. No, I, I was allowed to do everything that I did. Because no, all... according to the book. No, I did. According to the book, I could do everything that I did. But you yeah. can't move them more than 10 feet from where they were made. Go through the morning? Yeah, you can put them inside books and stuff like that. But if they're moved more than 10 feet from the spot they were made, it sets it off. Really? Yep. I'm not so remember, being a Nate didn't allow you to do that in any other campaign. Because I was really annoyed with Will that I could not do that. Because I was going to booby trap the all, shit out of them. All he said about for Will's uh, version, though, is it can't. all it can do is the damage version. You can't spell store unless it's a damage spell. Yep. That's what we Nate said. He never said anything about that. That does make Cliff of Warding a lot better. Like, balance-wise. Yeah. Press the button, Jen. With Micah, if I remember correctly, we wound up doing... Uh... Dimension oh, Door a lot, Polymorph a lot. What else for the other ones? Boom. Oh, uh, it's like Cure Wounds a few times. Uh, Cure Wounds, Polymorph. Uh, he had Dimension a couple. Door. I think he had a couple Raised Deads made, but they he only did two of those because they were expensive. Um, and then he just made a lot of Glyphs of Warding at whatever level he could. Stuck them under his armor and prayed that nobody would say the word boom in Helvish. Because oh, no. uh, I told Nate, I said, had he would have said the word to set them all off, everybody would have seen Micah go, oh no. <laughs> what about you, uh, Brad? His favorite spell is sword. Me? Yeah. Um, it's a toss-up between a level two spell and actually, I think another level two spell called lightning, because it can be fucking broken as hell. I don't think call lightning is level two. I, I thought the call lightning was three. three. It might be level three, but it's a low-level spell. Um. And Cloud of Daggers. Because Cloud of Daggers can do a shitload of damage at high levels. Third level. And Cloud of Daggers is... The, the only problem with Cloud of Daggers is you can't move it. Yeah, that's why you wait until you have a group chasing you, and you drop it in a doorway. If they want to follow you, they have to come through it. Yeah. But at high level, if you do that, most people are just going to be able to go, oh, that's great, Dispel Magic. True. Depends on who's chasing you. If you're running away from just guards? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you! If you're high level and running away from guards, like, you don't, what damage do you really have to do? Like, if you have a cleric with you, you just do Word of Recall, which is a great spell. Oh, um, I've always... Well, hold on, because okay. I don't think Ryan's given one. What? Favorite spell. favorite spell. From 5e or in general? Doesn't matter. Most of them have scaled by now. I'll get back to you on that one because I've got a few. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Ever Fred. since I watched, I'm going to name drop because Jen did. Ever since I watched Critical Role for the first time, and Scanlan Shorthall, <laughs> I think is his name. Yep. Bixby's hand. I want to use yeah. Bixby's hand. Bixby's hand. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I Bixby's just hand is a great be... spell. That's that's the wizard going. Oh, I only have an eight strength. Guess what? This has a twenty-two. Yeah, oh, really. <laughs> and I know exactly how I want to use it at least once. Oh, I I, want... I, if I if knowing you. You probably want to flick someone off to death. I know. I don't talk oh, with your mouth, old Brad. You know what? Favorite spell? Mm hmm. Maze. Maze. Yeah. 
Is that the one where you not only get to create a maze, but you get to uh, put different traps in it wherever you want? Like, you can put webbing that appears to slow people down. You can make random sounds appear through this hallway. Yeah. That's that's a great DM spell, I think. Is just have someone immediately go, maze! I don't yeah, know if it's still that one up just yet. I think there is one called Labyrinth now. Yeah, it, it, there, no. there's one that's basically the six of one, half dozen in the other version. Oh. It's like Mordekainen's Maze or something like that, maybe. Um, no, there's more... Unless it's in Xanathar's. It's not in the player handbook. Xanathar's has Temple of the Gods, which is a good spell. Ah, I um, just remembered how I decorated my Temple of the Gods as Micah, and oh, it was wonderful. So, what what I want to do with Bixby's hand is I want to be fighting someone up high, where there's a long distance to fall. Like Scanlan Shortcall. Push them off, like and then have it turn around and be flipping them off as they fall. I've also always wanted to do the whole thing, oh, I'm fighting someone, we're high in the air. I'm turning you into the thing with the smallest amount of HP so that all that carryover damage hits you when you fall. Um, I turn him into a worm. Yeah, here's the problem though. You're the kind of person to turn someone into a worm in a field. Nah. Yeah. yeah. There have been times where you're like, I'm going to do this thing. And people are like, really? You're going to do this here and now? <laughs> this is really the best place for it. Who hasn't done that? You remember when the bard decided I'm running at five enemies head on by myself? That was how she felt needed to be done. I'm the cleric running behind you. Wait, wait, let me heal you first! You got a mad elephant and she's pissed. <laughs> what do you think she's got? You're not do? an actual elephant, you just look like one! Right. I reiterate this so many times. Just how I played her. I was so desperate, like, just don't die! <laughs> um, but another fun spell. Anybody who's ever in a ship-based campaign, control water is your best friend. Another thing that Critical Role oh showed God, off well. Oh, God, we... Okay, oh God, I'm we, planning we on... Thought that through that. We've gone through that spell forever. As far as I'm aware. I had been... We were in a campaign probably eight months ago, I'd say almost. Um, and we were about to go, and we thought people would be chasing us on a boat. We never got to do it. But my plan was, because as a Tempest Cleric, and I got Control Water as one of my freebie spells I always know, I'm just going to stand at the ass end of the boat and start hitting them with waves and knocking them over. We also came up with the idea that you create a valley in the water, like freaking, you know, it did Moses, you know, parting the Red Sea moment. If I knew there's a rock, that would be more inclined to do that. Like, oh, there's a reef, like, 20 feet down. Great. <laughs> but I just wanted to be sneaky enough, and I never was, to sneak over to the boat and put a glyph of warding on the keel. So if you take out a ship's keel... Brad, you know how long it takes Glyph of Warding to prepare, right? Yep. Hence the, I'm not sneaky enough. Yeah, you, you'd have, it's not even sneaky enough. You get onto a keel, you're probably fine. It's holding onto a keel for an hour while drawing something with the other hand. Yep. Um, let's see, what else was there that I always wanted to do? I can tell you my two favorite right off the bat. <laughs> Silence and Polymorph. Silence is the ultimate caster or long-range caller F you, and Polymorph, depending on how you play it, is either an HP buff or a enemy in a jar spell, and I love it. Honestly, Silence is also a rogue's best friend, because if you hit your rogue with it, oh, they don't even have to worry about things they can hear. Yeah, till the rogue can't hear what is about to happen behind him. Now, here's my question, and I've thought about this before. If you have um, elven boots, the ones that make it where you make no sound when you're walking, 
Shouldn't that beep tremor sense? Because tremor sense is basically you causing vibrations in the earth. Well, so is sound. These boots nulligate the vibrations of sound. Shouldn't they also nulligate the sound? Or nullify. That's the word I'm trying for. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Um, shouldn't it nullify the sound that's you know causing the tremors? No. I don't. It's, I don't think it's canceling the vibration. It's just making the vibration silent. I just wish you were able to, like some of your other spells, is like you gain levels, certain things. Uh, get larger go farther something i wish it you i wish that could increase that'd be amazing i mean that works for a warlock warlocks are fun lancing blast i do remember um i think everybody here but ryan did like the dave's chappy like what class best suits you like oh, yeah. or anything. and I got warlock and I was like huh that's weird I'm like but I guess that makes sense that's the easiest way to get powers I, I have no idea how that. I got rogue no idea did you get rogue I thought you got fighter what was it fighter. I think you got think fighter got... and ranger and so did Angie no I, I got, got fighter barred. the first time and then I got rogue the second time <laughs> oh okay yeah you got fighter the first one and yeah Brad you got rogue I got warlock because I was just like I'm going to be on the front lines and I'm going to blow everyone up. And it was like, great. Well, you're a warlock. Then the second time I did it, I got barred. Didn't no, Angie got get Claire. ranger? Angie got fighter and then ranger. Now, I don't know. Okay. She got ranger, then fighter. Yeah, I remember Based texting her saying, how the hell did you get ranger? <laughs> um, which class, because we've had this discussion before, but it's been a while. Which class describes each member of the group best? Okay, so for Ryan, in our opinions, I see, yeah, I just see if we're just talking about people in general, yeah. I see Ryan as the best kind of rogue. Yes. He's not the overly edgy, like, I'm morally, and, I'm morally ambivalent because this society has made me this way. He's that rogue that's just like, look, I'm going to do a little crime. I'm going to do a little bad. I ain't going to hurt too many people. I'm, and Why also, is he Canadian? The, like I said, I think I said this before you got here, Brad. Ryan's character, at least Gario, is very pragmatic. It's the whole like, look, y'all are talking about how to get around the dragon. Let's focus on the fact that there's a dragon itself and figure out the problem with that. Like, he's, he's very like... He, he, He's the kind of character that takes you to step one, makes you focus on what step one needs to be, and then you go on. I'm the overthinker. I will flat out admit it. You're a what? I'm an overthinker. Oh, so overthinker. I'm very okay. much of a, how can I do this in a way the DM is not going to expect? Yep. Which is why you are a bard. Yep. Uh... Of Flashy. Want to make it cool. Nothing wrong with any of that, but you are a bard. Sometimes it's flashy. Other times it's just, I'm trying to think of, okay, what is he least expecting right now? And I have to look at what do I actually have? Like yep. throwing a right. powder horn in the face of a demon, even though it's immune to fire, and shooting it while I'm standing five feet away. Um, because, fuck it, nothing else is working. Or... Hey, let's go to the fire plane. And dispose of drugs. Yeah. I was thinking more of the bag of holding incident, but I mean. Oh, I hey, know. That's why I was. No one got the hold of the drugs. Okay, the drugs were successfully disposed of. Worst case scenario, Some there's hero. a high ass element. Some hero. Oh, to have that scene, just that, not even animated, just to have that scene painted out, Avani looking down on Hadrian. With just the subtext below of some hero, Ugh, oh. that'd be great. There were a oh, lot of yeah, times. If I get you to I... do a Vani, I would love it. It'd be amazing. Don't you? Was... Uh, don't you have a uh, halfling riding a volcano to get done first? That too. 
<laughs> I had so many instances in that campaign where I bit my tongue. Because, Jen, I'm throwing you under the bus here. It's fine. There was the time we were in the past, and I had just got done talking to my patron, and then you had, like, you looked at me and said, some of us need to learn how to talk to Faye. And I'm sitting there like, motherfucker, I just out-talked to Faye. Like, I just outsmarted her. Brad, your the camera's freezing. The was just looked at me and said, fuck you. Oh, I mean, Avani was a very, like... Naive sort. I'm going to say, uh, maul on the head kind of person, not even hammer. Like... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There, there was no filter, there was... There was an attempt at gentleness to bringing things, but it was always almost, like, cold alien yanti level of just, like, this is how it is, you're going to die, stop. And then there was the fucker who made me die because, let's play a prank! Let's give him this goggles! I do not apologize for anything Micah has ever done. Except, you know, that one thing Micah constantly apologizes to Avani for. Yep. Micah has made no mistakes, but he's still not going to... <laughs> stop. He still knows better than to just not say anything. That's what your characters need to learn. Don't put your dick in crazy. I mean, to be fair, like... According to Micah, he had been walking for about a week straight. Like, she was the only other person he had talked to. He hadn't done anything with Ivani yet. And she was just like, hey, you want to go for it? And he was like, he's like, drop the illusion. Did you drop the illusion? He was like, okay, that kind of sucked. Sure. My brightest okay. moment? No. <laughs> Playing Micah as a 20 year old guy? Yeah. What do we think Grayson is? And he said no. Yeah, what class is your uh, favorite fuzzy DM? Bard. Straight up bard. What makes you think I'm the bard, considering that's what we call you? I thought I was the warlock. No. no. Well, for a while we said you're a warlock because we said you'd probably be whipped. And <laughs> that's where all of your powers come from. Hey, if you're whipped, you're getting some. Well, we know that's not true. <laughs> oh, quite nice, both of you. Never. Yes, I will accept the martyr award now. Anyways. <laughs> I'll be honest, I think sorcerer, uh -oh. honestly. Natural magical powers. Nate, straight up wizard. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Angie. Angie's the tough one, like honestly. She has a lot of inner rage. I'm leaning more towards barbarian. Yeah, I could see Angie being a barbarian. Jen, I honestly Ranger. don't know. I honestly do not know what I would think Angie would be. Truly, that that's a tough one for me. I could see Angie actually being a druid too. We also say Hazen's a druid. Me be druid. That's what she says. Oh, Foxy says I'm a it. druid. Why do you think I'm a druid, I Foxy? I mean, you've known me the longest here, actually. <laughs> Is he that much of a tree hugger? <laughs> Don't answer that! Fuck. I just realized what the frick I just said. <laughs> Damn it. This That's just funny. in. Local player asks if I like wood. <laughs> the answer is... I couldn't finish that because I don't want my character to uh, I'll go with that one comedian. I have a uh, 100% going right. I have all... One word. One word. Call. Huxy, don't call me out in front of all these people. <laughs> oh, no. Now I want to know. <laughs> yeah. What, wait, let's talk about... Foxy, right, character you, you know about? do this. <laughs> Uh -oh, Damn it. 
you're gonna turn more red. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> We're doing this. Foxy, perk your ears up. We're talking about Cole and Andrew. So, um, as stated before, I. Yes, I do want a cat named Cole as well, and that will be explained too. As stated before, uh, I used to do like role playing, like in chats and stuff like that. I had a soul leader role play I was a part of for the longest time. Uh, I still love that character. I need to make a character based on him. Uh, I did a Naruto one, and then I met Foxy, and we just kind of went and did our own side one. It was just kind of the slice of life thing and stuff like that. It was about a uh, Neko named Cole. <laughs> That was uh, down on his luck and everything else like that. He met this guy named Andrew at the bar, who's just a normal guy, and they hit it off. And he basically told Andrew, "I was kicked out. I need a place to live." Andrew's like, "Come work for me, and or like come clean my house, basically, and you can stay there if you want." And they eventually, uh, basically fell in love. It was never actually said because Andrew uh, was like one of those quiet people. I'm married. But it was a, it's a story that I really did like because Cole was this cute little uh, cat boy. Um, and, turned butler. Uh, yeah, basically turned butler, turned cook, turned everything else like that. Uh, Andrew was that one of those people who like never smiled and Cole was like determined, like, no, he's got to smile. He's got to feel happiness, damn it. <laughs> and, yeah. So, apparently because... Uh, I don't know what about Cole makes you think druid, but okay. <laughs> Lord. Foxy, okay. just for you, one day I'm going to make uh, a druid based on Cole. He'll be a tabaxi oh, that's or something be like fun. that. I already love Karam, man. He's pretty damn... I can say if there was a Cole, I can say maybe he's close. Cole, Cole wouldn't be as like wise in dealing with animals. Cole would be like, even if he is like 3,000 years old, he'd just be like, nature's wonderful! Like... He, he's just that kind of person. He's always upbeat, even in the dumbest or worst of times. Uh, You're describing so, the cat version of Spongebob. What? You're describing the cat person version of Spongebob. I mean, it's not quite that just, like, blindly happy and everything like that, but it's just one of those things where it's like, everything has a silver lining. Yeah. We <laughs> need a call in our life. <laughs> yep. Um, Foxy actually drew me Cole just as a little sketch and stuff like that and oh, I absolutely love him um okay what creature from the monster manual describes each of our characters on their worst day that's way too in depth it, yeah I'll say character in this campaign yeah, that's, that, mm -hmm. that's a very in-depth question for right now. Like, let the characters build a little while before we try and say something like that. Okay, that We never sense. got around to me. Hey, so I know what you say I am. I say, what do you guys think? I'd like, say, if, like, if IRL, what class am I? Ranger. You enjoy Pokemon Go a little too much to be anything else. I'm actually kind of taking a break from that, surprisingly, but yeah, I can get it. Oh, speaking of, uh, Jen, are you excited for Chimchar in November? Mm. He's more red, if I remember right. It was just like, okay. Whatever. I don't know what Chinese <laughs> Chimchar looks like. I just know Angie loves that uh, generation. I'm still trying to work on getting my Jirachi. <laughs> and that's going to take a while. Johnny um, Chimchar is like pinkish. Kind of red, kind of pink. I say for anybody who doesn't know, I know Hazen and Angie both think I'm like ultimate cleric. And yep. there's a uh, background for that that I'd prefer not to discuss at the moment. Team Mom. Oh, yeah, the Team Mom thing also fits in. Yeah, there's okay. that too. What? Well,. Oh yeah, we already did Ryan, which was rogue. Yeah. Well, what? Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, is there anything Ryan wants to input or say? Because we've been talking for a while. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm currently working on a character for something. So Gotcha. I am trying to get Well out some insight or does it matter? That is up to the DM. Not me. Is it part of my game or negative? Then we'll just hold off on it. Um I think you know what's going on anyway. I don't I, I think I know what you're making the character for. I don't know anything about it whatsoever though. Well yeah. Um Foxy says well, yeah. she sees Jen as Ranger. Uh I don't know how. Do I really seem like I'm like, you know, I I go out and stalk animals or people for a living? Uh Pokemon Go. That that's what you Okay. Foxy, what do you see each of us as? So we Well, got I'm a druid because of Cole. Druid, cleric, so Jen, Ryan, Nate, and me. Leo said she sees me as Ranger, so that's me. So Ryan, Brad, and Angie, what do you think, Leo? Um, while well, Foxy's answering that, uh, for other people's classes, I didn't say it for Nate. I see. Okay, so she says Nate, wizard or sorcerer. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely wizard. It's like, you know, out of the book. Definitely. Definitely cynical enough to be one. Wizards are the ones that are like, I understand magic. And because I understand magic so well, I know it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like IT guys like everybody's like oh technology is incredible but if you get into IT security you're like I maybe own a printer it's not wireless and if it makes a weird noise I'm going to shoot it and I between barbarian and spider yeah I could see that spider I would say probably spider more than barbarian personally I thought I think it was hard for me to come up with one I think for me, for Nate, it would be a toss-up between wizard and monk. Wizard and what? Monk. Monk. So wizard seems to be the consensus. Alright, and now you just gotta do Brad and... Uh... Ryan. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else surprising from the campaign, getting back to actually talking about the campaign an hour later. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it's fun to go on tangents. Um, Did Dante really go out on a damn rampage around those people, or is it because, you know, they had locked him up and he just couldn't handle that's an interesting choice. Um, Brad's a paladin? Well, I guess it goes back to the whole whipped thing. I'm trying to put, you know, like say, him, like say him and Holy and Holy Knight together. and I'm... Yeah. Maybe. Me. Well, think, think either Oath of Vengeance or Oath of Conquest. That's true. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'm not a dick. We didn't say you were a dick. You guys we just said trying to get you. She couldn't see you playing paladin. I said think Oath of Vengeance or Oath of Conquest, and then she went, "Oh, now I can see it." I enjoyed Oath of the Ancients, honestly. Oath of the Ancients is a fun one. Nylock was fun to play. Was that like Oath of like, the Ancients? I, I, I forgot. He was. It just was ice themed. I just right. get really bored with paladins. You say you get bored but with paladins? Mostly because the campaigns that I play in, you don't have a whole lot of inter like that I've actually played a paladin in. You don't have a lot of interactions with the gods. You know, you're not getting messages. Hey, you need to go do this. Yeah. Well, anything like that. That's what I'm really doing now with this campaign. Is the gods, whenever they send a message, usually they're pissed, so it's a bad thing. Um, occasionally you'll get like, ah, oh, Nora got just kind of a good job or anything like that, but. 
These these are more the gods that'll melt your face if you see them. Yeah. Like that's the kind of thing I'm going for here. So if the new mutant shows up in front of me, I'm gonna die anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, most Got people who see the new mutant are already dead, so. But, hey, I gotta run and grab something real quick. I will be right back. So I'm okay. just gonna mute my so you don't hear asshole cat. Oh, I'm sure people would love the Freya show. Oh yeah. If I thought she'd actually sit here in front of it, I would put her like where you could see her. Hell, while I'm gone, she may end up on the back of the chair because for yeah. some reason she likes the chair. Foxy um, asks, "Are these gods homebrew?" Yes, absolutely. New um, Man is definitely homebrew. I'm I'm still flushing out the rest of the pantheon. I've only got a couple gods done. Um, there's one I still have to do for Ryan, but given things that are happening with him, I don't think it's going to play too much <laughs> into the future. Um, but yes, there is the Numian, which is the god of the grave, uh, and right now is the only god with a life cleric, the only <laughs> life cleric, so technically only life god. Um, there is a female trickster god that the players have not encountered anything of right now. Why am I a rogue? You've only seen me play one character and he's evil. <laughs> it's not because you it's not because of evil or anything like that. You just you yourself come up as the kind of guy that's just like, I'm gonna do things the easy way. And I'm going to do things the not dumb way. Sometimes the not dumb way is not the easy way. I'm still not gonna do things the dumb way. <laughs> and that's just very roguish. That's very like I'm smarter than this. Like, I'll say it this way, Ryan. You seem like the kind of person who can play Dishonored without getting any kills or without being seen. Like, that's the kind of vibe I am at. Like, you're, that's what gives the vibe you give off and what gives into you possibly being a rogue. Okay. FYI, being a rogue is fun. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. I have oh. one rogue character, and he is so much fun to play. If you guys, if you guys want to know about the character I'm creating, just to give you an idea, he's a soul stitched, which is the race, uh, Oathbreaker Paladin. Ooh. ooh. That's gonna be. Speaking wild. of ooh, I need to sit lower. <laughs> this is why you need to get a really good freaking not really chair. I'm like Nor. I got a chair. It's not anything crazy, and you could probably hear it creaking, but. It's better than what sorry, I was you were saying. I can. What? I said sorry. You were saying. I was saying you need to get one of these chairs already. I would if there was anywhere to put it that wouldn't run into everything else. <laughs> well, here. Use the extra bedroom downstairs that nobody's using. You mean the one that husband's using for all of his computer equipment already? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, uh, you do have that one room with like your masks and your cosplay outfits and stuff like that. Could that not be converted? Yeah, I'd have to get rid of the old laptop and put this one in its place. And that, I mean, I can do it. It's just old laptop and I have to find another home, which is probably going to be in a trash can somewhere after it's been erased. Well, I mean, it's just the thought process you're not using it anyway, and then you have a backdrop that, kind of like what I'm doing with all of Angie's stuff here, like, they can't see all of it, but they can see Genos over there, Genos over there, there's Sailor Moon drawn in coffee by her old roommate, a bunch of Pokemon stuff on this wall. I mean, you can see the handle of a Keyblade back there. Honestly, if I put it where I ha could use the, the ugh, chair, I'd have... The background would probably be the uh, pot figurines and the manga shelf. Mm. Not what you're mind, but that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any decorations. Also, I figured out something. Uh, I finally figured out... Uh, just speaking of something, speaking of decorations, speaking of anime. Uh, remember that figure I got that I had no idea where it was from? Yes. It's some from, like, vampire anime. She's one of the main characters. And I learned something from the stuff we got. So we got this figure. And we got this poster. Mm-hmm. Same character. Nice. Apparently she just has a little 
form that uh so is a rosario a vampire no, no it's, it's not, not rosario. rosario definitely not that hentai no <laughs> rosario's um, not hentai i don't think anybody who thinks that is not a hentai is it's, warped it's damn close that's like freaking uh oh, crap what's the uh that's like hbo softcore porn I'll take both your words for it. I've not watched it. I don't know. Already. I know it's I know it's etchy as hell. Um, no, this one has like a super long title that is in Japanese here, and I'm not gonna look it all up. But <laughs> I finally figured don't that worry out. Don't about it. I was like, it's cool. Then you know that's the fun of grab bags is you learn new things. But it's like it's all in Japanese. <sighs> Maybe one to think about while Brad's not in the room. I think I think we did this one last time. Also, what's something you hope for, for your character, Ryan? As in what way? Anyway. Like something you hope to get out of him, something like, uh, or you know, a, something you hope to do once he gets to a certain level or power or something like that. I have no development, clue. you know, abilities, etc. I have no clue. Just let I'm it ride. Not that huh? far yet. <laughs> I want him to survive, <laughs> and judging by last session, it hasn't happened yet. It's okay. We're getting to the point where he's gonna be broken slowly. I can't wait for that. That's gonna be amazing. Ah, uh, that's cute. You think I'm not preparing for that? Well, no, that's why I'm talking to you about it. Instead of, you know, know, doing the dumb thing and going, I'm going to hide everything. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, because I, I do like to keep tabs as to what levels and what my players are taking because I'm the kind of DM where the manga was far better. Oh, for Rosario Vampire. Okay. Uh, but anyway. Uh... So it is or it isn't? Apparently, Foxy says it's better. I'm just going off the Foxy's thing. Oh, I've never seen sorry. Rosario Vampire. Chad, I thought you were talking that the, the figurine was from Rosario. It's like, I thought we said it wasn't. No, 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 no. I said the manga was far better, quoting her message. Um, Apologies, Foxy. I haven't been reading very well lately. But what was I saying? Foxy, what is something you're kind of, What is one of your favorite moments to date so far? <laughs> yeah, Foxy, let's make this show about you. <laughs> She's the only one that's responding to anybody. I know. It's just fun. Oh, I saw human hands. There we go. Yep, just breeze on his chest. There he is. What's something you hope to either have happen with Corin as far as abilities or character development or whatever, Brad. Find out what the fuck is stalking me. Um, um, real quick, Foxy says one of her favorite parts was the drinking game. Of course it was. That was really I good. In real life, I'm not that much of a lightweight. <laughs> um, when I was talking to Foxy about it earlier, the response I had gotten from her was at least uh, this is what i interpreted from it let me know if i'm wrong but it was basically like that was a good tension breaker now it, it made everybody feel like they didn't have to be on high alert anymore they were out of the cathedral they were out with these people they could take a moment and just <sighs> they knew these people could whip ass if they had a chance oh they don't yeah. need the chance i would like to run into them again i, I do like those characters I agree. I think it'd be interesting to see the girls again. <laughs> um, the Jiko Harpies. Which, uh, I don't know if I ever... Did I talk about the fact that the Jiko girls were inspired by a different roleplay? Not really. Okay. So, uh, as well as Foxy, there's someone we both know from fanfiction named Scotchy. And, uh... Do you Scot like Scotch? Or huh? does he only like Scotch guard clothing? Scotchy is uh, a wonderful woman, and uh, 
she's probably never going to catch our streams because she's in Britain. <laughs> and right now is dumbass o'clock for anybody to be up watching. Uh, I'm just kidding, Scotchy. You're not a dumbass. I love you. Uh, but I had a character named Crystal that she absolutely loved. It was just this big, boisterous woman. Uh, and her whole charm was like just... She was boisterous, she loved to drink, and she was stupid strong. <laughs> and her, her whole thing was about just having a good time, having fun. And then uh, Gwen is one of Scotchy's characters that I um, appropriated. <laughs> I full on stole. <laughs> I asked and she said it was okay. And then I just made Carissa up as a another one. Yes, Scotchy is best. That is definitely true, Foxy. Um, ah, internet friends. I would like to see corn not necessarily find peace, but to find acceptance. Thank you, Miss America. In what way? He's got a lot of baggage following him around that will be fully revealed later on. So but... he wants to drop the baggage. He wants to no longer feel guilty about it as much. Um, outside of that, do his best to keep everybody alive. And start his own mercenary group. Leo, I'm not gonna put you on the spot, but just for curiosity's sake, your favorite character of the group so far. Yes, big favorites, Leo. Divide us. <laughs> like I said, no pressure, just, you know, interesting. We just want to get an opinion. I feel like it's going to be Gario. Leo is asking, what's Korn's goal? Yeah, and he just... I think that was posted as he was saying it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Way too yes, dark. Yes, everyone loves a cuddly. Yeah. Everybody loves the cuddly. I agree. Do you want to up Micah then with his little uh, foxy persona? Or would it be fursona? It would have been fursona, and it would have been much funnier if you would have said fursona. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned in the last role history that uh, Micah was a werefox. I don't think so. I think you talked about Micah a bit, but you never mentioned that he was a werefox. Yep. Kind of oh, Micah was a full-on for Like, Micah was a werefox. He was in love with a naga. Like, Adrian just and never was. Of it all. What? And fully unashamed of it. Oh yeah, no. And the funny part is, Adrian. I, I would like to believe that Adrian uh, was just like, you know what? I'm not going to taunt the cleric about who he likes and doesn't like. Considering, well, he's powerful. He's the healer. I'm the bitch of a spider. More so, he was just kind of like. I, actually, did it. And did anybody at the party go without having any sort of animal qualities? Because I mean, he got Spider Girl, Micah became a were fox, and became infatuated with Avani, who herself is a Naga. Tora is a uh, were tiger Tabaxi, who now has a husband who's a were tiger. That is and a I got to figure out she's not a Yonti, so that was kind of fun. Yep. To be fair, Hadrian didn't have much choice in the matter. She owns his soul and said, you're going to father my children. And she doesn't look like a spider most of the time. Just Leo in the said, times where it matters. Overall, I like all characters for different reasons. Night. Yep. Now I'm curious. About what now? What, what the reasons are. Again, no pressure, Leo. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. We're just all curious. This show has become about <laughs> Fox. But you're almost a pretty yeah, one. Not everywhere, Hazen. Let's admit it. You know, say we haven't even really started. To, we haven't really talked in a lot about you know the whole of uh, role performance in general, but it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah. Oh, Foxy says, ahem. Ahem. Coming to you live. 
from wherever fa from the west coast that's all I know I'm finding the urge to grab my phone and start playing California Girls yes, Brad, oh I was going to say if you really want me to I can start being like the uh, audio cue noise guy because I can load up my system to actually play sound effects through the system for fun that would be amazing if, if you wanted to uh just I mean, be the random sound effects guy. Yep. We'll, we'll just, uh, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll, like, tell you things and be like, okay, like, prepare things that would be in this environment or this one. Or, yeah. uh, maybe I'll just be like, go for it, and I'll tell you a noise that pissed me off so you can spam them. This is the only noise-making app, like, just for noises that I have on my phone. Is this camera. All right, so Arcris is because she's a crazy beach. Gario because Gario and his reactions are amusing. Yes. Yeah, Gar Gario seems to be the only one of the, the only person to be like, you all are a little too comfortable with the fact that there are dragons and purple worms flying about. For Nork, it's just one of those like it is what it is. I've got to deal with it. Why am I worried about what it is? Gorn is very much so the guy that's like, well, <laughs> Norik is good boy. So yes. let's avoid. I'm trying. No, Norik is good boy. I like that one. I, I like that Norik just gets the goodest boy award, like straight out of Joe Cat. Oh my god, would you make that a T-shirt? That'd be funny. Just, just uh, your drawing of Norik, just the goodest boy. Oh no, it'd have to be a. Sp Beach bubble where Nork is actually saying it. Nork is good boy. <laughs> That's Nork when drunk. All right. If he ever gets good drunk, boy. we still haven't figured out if he can yet. He can get drunk. The only person who would have a hard time getting drunk would be uh, Dante. Because he burns out the alcohol. Yep. Which I'm so sad that I never entered Hatrian into a drinking contest. Nate was smart enough to keep them away from you. And the one drinking contest we did have, Avani lost in spades. <laughs> and I had no <laughs> idea why. Micah wasn't allowed to enter. Corin and the mishaps he gets into. <laughs> Are you guys hearing any of this, by the way? I haven't heard you make any noises yet. I, I won't lie. In every campaign, it seems like I become the designated. Is this something where you still have to push a button for it to work? Mm. Like there was Hadrian, there was Liam. Will wasn't Will. horrible about it, but it still happened. I I get Taryn definitely. <laughs> I like Jay's sense of humor. Yeah, I agree with you, Leo. He's really something. <laughs> I need to find something else to mess with Nate about. Chernobyl's losing its touch. You guys, are you guys hearing any of this yet? Nope. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's no fun if it works. Here's the Stop question right though. Away. Do we have to be like in a server call for this to work? Does maybe a no. private call not work for it? Shouldn't keyword. Oh, that feels so oh, the fun of IT bullshit. <laughs> hmm. Let's see what else. Um. I'll ask a question. Uh, everybody here but Nate. Wow. No. Everybody here but Ryan uh, knows... I saw Nate on the thing. Uh, knows my DMing style. What are you guys most worried about? Just worried about... Um... I'm worried about curses and cursed items, Hazen! <laughs> to be fair, magic items are rare. The ones yeah. you have are probably the ones you're going to have for the next two or three levels. What ones do I have? Yeah. 
I know why it's not working, I think. Oh, fix no, it. Let's no. try again. I just want everybody who is either watching this or will watch it to know that Hayden has given me almost nothing but, like, cursed items in the past. Okay, have I given you nothing but cursed items, or have I been... Uh, either A, this item is cursed. It is extremely cursed. Even mentioning it is a bad idea, and you cracked a joke about it. Or B, this is an I item. I never mentioned you don't... it. I yes. said, hey, I got this deck of cards. Uh, or B, there is an item here. Do you touch it, or do you take it? And if you do, I go, great, you're cursed. Both. You do both. Fucking deck nearly killed me about four times. And the fucking bow was making me into fashionista. <laughs> you were able to get rid of that one. The bow was going to turn you into a woman, by the way. It got ripped off my arm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was. It was going to turn you into a full-on woman if you continued to go along with the bonuses. Yeah, I was never planning on going that far. Well, you never knew how far you were going along. Because uh, eventually, uh, had you done one or two more things, you they would have automatically started. Great. <laughs> um, let's see, what else was there? There was the demon. Ah, uh, the Nelfish name. Thing. No, the one you that made the me one that was in your in stomach? Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. Basically, one of our characters was heavily under the influence of the, uh... I think he's a demon lord, it could be devil, Grazd. And, yeah, he kind of got, um... Randy. Two-year-old dog mentality. He got Randy. Oh, look, it's female. Sex solves it all my problems. Hey, look, it's a goddess. Hey, uh... On the flip side, it was all consensual. I still can't believe that with my plus one charisma, I rolled a 19. Plus one. Plus 15. Against that fucking goddess. Yeah. Oh, well. Things I'm worried about. Uh, <laughs> I'm honestly afraid we'll break your game to a point where you just you get salt enough to us that you actually, I don't know, like, just go rando sometime. Um, I do homebrew things and I do change things to give more of a challenge, but I don't ever try to be vindictive with things. That being Oops. said, uh, One if... No fish name. Yeah, uh -huh. That that being said, though, if you... The, I will have characters or things get vindictive. Like, say if you're in front of someone who might fight you and you do something stupid to rile them up, I'll be like, okay, nope, they're, they're gonna fight. We're gonna actually have this fight now. It was gonna be fine. But I don't... I don't plan on doing things solely for the fact of foiling you guys. Because I don't want it to be that you guys spend 30 minutes planning in front of me for something that I didn't plan for and I go, you know what would screw up their plan? I mean... Because that just doesn't seem fair. Now, if you didn't account for everything, but... You, when it comes to, you know, homebrewing off your butt, mm -hmm. so you can't plan or, like, anything in either direction, really, I think. Yep. Uh, I'm definitely no Chris Perkins when it comes to making anything. That's for damn sure. I mean, the only thing I've made, I think I made one magic item, and I made uh, the Volcanda. Those are my only homebrew things. What was the magical thing? Uh... Those shoes? It was an item. No, 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 no. The, the boots given to Gario are completely and totally on level. It's an artificer-only item. All oh, the glasses? No, the glasses I get. The goggles I gave you were just regular goggles that were cursed. Oh, no, no he's talking about the ones on Philippe. Oh, that's, once again, an artificer thing. They choose something and make an inanimate object have a brain. Um, oh, I made the hush spell. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I did the hush spell. I did... Uh, 
A cat is trying to bite my foot. She likes yeah, your so socks. I just, all I did was the hush bell to Volcanda, and I helped Brad come up with a weapon for his gunslinger. That's true. That, that was a fun campaign. I like guns. Yeah. Well, also just uh, I I I feel like you. I, I like how I set up the WWW and everything like that. You learning how a railgun could work, that kind of thing. Until you remembered how much damage it did, and you're like, oh, that's why you never use it. Yeah. I realize that the, like, you have to waste an action basically to charge it up. Uh, or an attack if you had multiple attacks. I realized that that didn't equal the damage that was coming out of it. I was like, oh, okay, that's why this isn't worth it at all. I've already got ideas to talk about, boys. <clears throat> okay. If you were actually in a fantasy world and you were, you know, either fighters of some sort, what weapon would be your weapon of choice? Like, which one I, do you like the most? I wouldn't. I'd go full caster. I'd go, I'd either be a druid, um, I'd be a druid, I'd be a, uh, was third probably yeah i could probably do wizard um or if i'm lucky sorcerer or i'd go warlock and i just full up give up my soul like i would be caster and i wouldn't go hexblade either because i don't want to just be given weapons i'd want you know like the great powers like being able to talk to people through their minds or absorb the health of those who have died i'd probably go so fade, irl weapon probably longbow irl weapon spear Short, sweet, to the point, literally. Like, anybody could take a stick and poke someone with it. Hand and a half. So oh, basic Hand and a half sword, a bastard sword. Yeah. Um, not too heavy, not too light. Can be wielded one-handed, two-handed, very easily. Yeah. Decent range. Well, you say easily. Basically, you can decently do both. Yeah. I'd um, like, if I were to have a blade, I like the whole, you know, bastard sword, you could do one or the other. I'd rather have a weapon that's weighted for one, just because it's the best version of that, I'd say. I mean, you know, you oh. go medieval and stuff like that. What well, The best version is... Yeah. <laughs> for my size, and personally, like, if we went... Oh, I'm going how I am right now. I'm probably going short swords. No, I'm definitely going spear if we're going how we are right now, because I don't want people with short swords to come near me. I mean, Jen um, would be the worry because she's got a fucking longbow. So that's just... 600 yeah. range, bitch. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. You see that guy over there? No, you don't. But no, okay. I... Okay. If you could be one of your characters in real life, which one would you be? Ooh, I think I'd have to go Micah. I was about to say me and Vanya, hands down, period. It's not one I've played with you guys. I would go Vax. Yeah, you told Is me that about that. Rogue? That's his bullshit rogue that he got, like, cla like certain multi-classes banned from for his group. Okay, did you hear that now? I think yeah. I heard something. Okay, one sec. Um, it doesn't come across clear. Uh, like, I heard, like, dawn, dawn, but there was a, like, kind of wispy noise around it that was blocking yeah. most of it. Hmm. Leo says I... daggers and surprise attacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. There's that too. <laughs> you don't need a long one. Um, heard that? Uh, don't know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, like okay. if you can, Ryan, like play one and then listen to the stream to see how it's coming across. So, he okay. I ripped off a weapon from a video game. He basically had the blades of chaos from God of War, and I love the idea of those. You know, they are good for range. They're good for up close. You can use them to trip people up, potentially climb. Like, there's a lot that you could do with them if you were proficient in how to use them. So that's my big thing with him. Plus, I mean, he could sneak like a motherfucker. <laughs> the rogue could sneak. And if he missed his sneak attack you didn't know that he'd attacked you 
because Skulker is an amazing feat for anybody who's trying to be sneaky. I still have the ideas like of Bonnie was the first time I did a different style ranger than Hunter. And it was a UA at the time, and I thought to myself, you know, given the right incentive, she could basically be like, you know, in the middle of battle, I'm here. Oh, no, I'm not. Right. And she's right. like 15 feet away, and it's like, yes, I like this idea. It's like Hunter with a tiny bit of teleporting rogue. I love this. Yeah. See, uh, I do want to play a druid. I did have an idea for a druid uh, if I do play one, which was a... He's a lizard folk circle of the swamp druid. Basically, uh, he's not. He just wants to learn a bit about the world, how the world's doing, and everything like that. Simply because uh, lizard folk don't really do ambassadors and stuff like that, so they never know how the world is outside their swamp. So he's just like, and it's basically just I'm going to spread the swamp to all, and like everywhere he go, like if he does plant growth or something like that, it causes a swamp or something like that instead. But, uh... I've never he, let myself play a wizard. He was, uh, gonna kind of be the protector of the group, only because, like, he was going to basically make himself the protector of the group. Because he was gonna look at all these, like, creatures and stuff like that with no armor, with, sh like, very flat teeth compared to him, and just be like, Ah, hatchlings. I watch over hatchlings. Oh my god, that's sad. I think so that was sad from the other game. Except good. A lot more <laughs> confident. Yeah. And, like, during the, like, after a long rest, because he's a lizard folk, he has a feature where he can, like, take bones and stuff like that and make people weapons. Like, he'd give the squishy casters, like, here you go, little one. Shield protects you. And then he'd yeah. go on with someone else, and they'd be like, I can't use this. And, like, whenever they would lose it or anything else, he'd be like, here you go, try club. I'll be honest, instead of Lizard Folk, I think it'd be wonderfully ironic if he was via Shino. Well, the reason I did Lizard Folk also is because, like I said, he can make shields and stuff like that. Druids can't use weapons if they're made of metal. So just kind of, you know, that kind of thing. And also, you know, Lizard Folk Circle of the Swamp makes sense. Like I said, do you know what, do you know what the via Shino was? I don't think I do. It's another uh, Ravnica style race so like primrose is Alexa. are those the blue and people got a Vidalka, which is the blue Vidalka is the blue the yeah the, the blue people okay and say Bayashino is like the crazy ass lizard person eh. that'd be fun but I'd rather do like the lizard folk kind of lizard person just the cold like he does think angry lizard think a yeah. pitifully angry lizard person yeah no this one isn't someone who's angry this is just uh this is someone who doesn't understand the world. What he understands is there are those who are strong and there are those who are weak, but that doesn't mean the weak have to perish and stuff like that. So everybody around him that isn't, you know, that have, doesn't have a hide, isn't able to just bite someone, that kind of thing, they are hatchlings. And he will refer to even the mightiest king as hatchling. Um, I can see that. Yeah, it'd just be, greetings, king hatchling. I've never allowed myself to play a wizard because I know I'd try and use the spells for absolute bullshit. Well, that's... Um, then play an illusionist. I think you could make a good illusionist, Brad. I feel... I, like, I would still do just absolutely stupid shit that it's like... But that's the thing. Now your minor illusion makes sound and can be animated. Like, your illusions aren't static. They're animated. Like, I feel like you could do well with that. Do you remember when Hadrian had minor illusion and I was using it to make like screams and lure people? Yeah. I'd be pulling shit like that, but it's like, oh look, there's a small child running into that. Oh god, there's a blood curdling scream coming from there now. Yeah, that's the whole point of an illusionist is to do things like that. Um, dig a hole, make it look like there's grass over it. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yep. I think that's more. God, there was it's not major illusion there's another one that there's minor illusion that. there's ma there's uh minor image major image major image that's what it was there's one illusion spell that's just fucking disgusting it's uh you look at a mile of land and you yeah. go i want it to be how i want 
and the land changes. So if there's a mountain, nope, it's just a field. If there's a field, nope, there's a mountain or there's a ravine or something like that. And the best part is people can see through it, but unless they could dispel the magic, there's not a damn thing they could do about it. They just know that what they're walking on is wrong, but until it's fixed... Uh, I had that one at one point. What was that one called? That spell? You, there, uh, you did not have that spell. Illusionary I was terrain. able to... No, it was... I could get it as a ranger at one point. I was trying to remember. It's like, oh, what was that spell? I know that spell. I know uh, that this one's like a level 8 spell. Yeah, you wouldn't have been able to get that with your multi class into cleric, I don't think. Clerics don't even get the spell, so... I think well, it's just a thing. wizard... Maybe druid? I think she took too many levels of cleric to have been able to get to level 8 spells. Rangers can only get to level 5. Yeah, that explains it. Okay, that. no, it's a level spe 7 spell called Mirage Arcane. Nope, no, no, that was the one I was thinking of. But <laughs> You're probably thinking of the one I named. Illusionary Terrain. Um... I hate to do this, guys, but I've been rubbing my eyes and getting tired. I need yeah. to get to bed so yeah. I get to work in the morning. I think this is a good place to call it. Um, I, I didn't really do a lot of recapping in this episode, but basically, from the spiders, they uh, left the cathedral. They hung out with the Jikos, had a little drinking game, which Arcris won. They, on the next day, found an old caravan that had been, well, not old, but a caravan that had been uh, ravaged that morning where uh, Norik found and nurse to help the injured Dante. Uh, from that, they returned into town. They dealt with the uh, yes. Celestial Huntsman and with Raymond, who then left. And from that, they got paid. They learned about crystals under the uh, No More General Store. The shield got, the sandboard got repaired, and they went off to this next uh, adventure for them, which is this I dungeon. Want, I want to clarify one thing. The bodies I burnt were because burying bodies in the desert is highly ineffective. So it's like, how do we keep the desert creatures from eating these dead bodies? I don't know. Maybe you just let them eat them. Burn them. Who knows? And then I later mutilated three corpses. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is what will happen. But, yeah, I think Jen has the right idea. I think this is a good time to call it a little under two hours. Uh... I hope everybody enjoys. I hope anybody who has to go to work the next day. Uh, well, I hope they have an easy day because I know I do. I have to go in earlier from now on until I get this new job. But uh, Oh, did you fill out that application? Yeah, I filled it out and sent it. Um, but yeah, so I think we're going to call this here and we will see everybody Friday. There's a little bit of Freya to hold you until you see her. Yay! Break it! Ooh, finally! Yep. Thanks, sweet kitty. <laughs> That's the entire reason Jen does all of this, this role history and everything else like that, just to see the cat. I need to get a cat. <laughs> I need to get one, too, and uh, Foxy says I need to name it Cole. So, I'm saying, sorry, this has been a little bit of everywhere, yep. everybody, but if you like it, I say go back and watch all of our sessions. They're archived on twitch.tv slash role performance. Well, they only archive for a little bit. Other. Right. Oh, okay. And say otherwise, you can catch us at our YouTube channel where they are going to be archived permanently at what was it, Hazen? Because I know we had it slightly backwards. It, no, uh, Twitter is backwards. YouTube is still roll performance. Twitter is at performance roll for some reason. Because. Go figure. You mess with stuff. At least you didn't run into what I had the first time I tried to make a Twitter for this. Yeah, we know. We remember. Jesus. That sucks. So, thanks say until then, I guess. Have fun, enjoy the game. Thanks say come and chat with us for the next session, which will be this coming Friday at hopefully 8 p.m. Maybe a little sooner. We'll figure out that in the meantime. But you'll get to see me be a zombie. <laughs> and not, not, not in the spooky way. But all right. I think that's it. See you all Friday. Until next time. Oh, nope. <laughs> and now he returns. He re well, now we can show. figure out the weird shit. <laughs>
No, I, I think, think we we just can you guys hear me? You got on. Yes. Am I loud or louder or softer than I was? You're fine. You're good. Uh, I am ending the stream now, guys. So talk to you later. We're gonna continue talking a little bit. <laughs> Ryan says bye. <laughs>